Hey guys, welcome to my channel Indian Pythonista where we explore anything and everything related to Python and in this video we are going to explore the underscore in Python. So underscore actually has a very special meaning in the Python programming language. The underscore character is used at different places for achieving different kind of goals. So in this video we are going to see what are the different ways in which underscore is used at different places in Python. So we are going to explore them one by one. So without any delay, let's get started. Okay, so here comes the case one, which is not actually a use case, but it is more of a feature kind of a thing. So the feature is that underscore is actually used for storing the result of the last executed expression in an interactive shell. So let me show this to you with an example. So as you know that Jupyter Notebook is also a kind of an interactive shell. So let's say I just try to execute um, any kind of an expression in my um, interactive shell, which is the Jupyter Notebook in this case. So if I just run it, I get the output as 12. But now if I just try to find the value of the underscore variable, look at that, it is 12. So what does this mean? It means that underscore is used by the interpreter for storing the last expression value. So now if I just try to do underscore plus eight, what will I get? I will get 20. But now if I just try to find the value of underscore, it is not 20 because underscore plus eight gave 20. And now underscore contains the value 20 because that is the value of the last expression which was evaluated by the interpreter. So in this way, um, you can say this is kind of a feature uh, in which underscore is used for storing some values, right? So this is the case one. Now here's the case two, which is that underscore can be used for ignoring the values. So what it means actually is that at any place in your Python code where you do not want a value to be assigned to a variable, then you can use underscore at that place, right? So let us try to see this with an example. So let's say I give you the task of printing hello 10 times. So what you do is you simply use a for loop for x in range 10, you print hello, right? So now if you just try to notice one thing, um, we can see that x here is quite useless because we are not using it in the loop body. So here, what we can do is we can replace X with underscore. So in this way, the same thing is happening here. No change in the execution way, but still we can see that we are not using a variable name uselessly, right? So by putting underscore here, we are signifying that, that the sequence iterator here that we specify here has no meaning or no use in the loop body. So in these kind of cases, you can use the underscore. So this is one of the cases. Um, let me let me show you another case, which is let's say you have a function add sub which returns um, a plus b and a minus b. So in Python, you must have encountered many functions which return multiple values. For example, this add sub function in which you pass one three, you get four and minus two as two values. So now um, let's say you write x comma y for storing the result of this function execution, and now you get x as 4 and y as minus 2. But consider a particular situation when you only want the addition value, you have nothing to do with the subtraction value that you're getting from this function. So what you can do is that you can simply ignore y and you can put an underscore there so that you um, have you do not use a variable name uselessly, okay? So you're just ignoring the second value that you're getting from this function output. So in this way, you will still get the x value as four and there will be no y, right? So this is the case that um, is quite important and is used a lot in the Python code by many people when they want to ignore some values. Lastly, let me show you an example. Um, let's say you have, you are getting three values from somewhere. So you want only the first and the third value. So what you can do here is x comma underscore comma z equal to one to three. So in this way, you get x and z fine and there is no y because you have not put any y here, right? So in this way, we can use underscore for ignoring all those, va all those values which we do not want to be assigned to a variable name. So this was case two. Okay, so here comes the case three, which I feel is quite interesting because it gives you a way of creating private variables, functions or classes in a Python script. So let me just dive into the example to give you um, 
a clear view of what it is all about okay so let's say that you created a python script which i have named here as mymodule.py so now in that script you write some variable names like x equal to 10 and then you write underscore y equal to 5 so the only difference between these two variable names is that one contains a single leading underscore okay so we will see that what happens if we try to import this particular module in some other python script then how will these two variable names differ in terms of importing so that is the first thing and another thing here is that i have another function called hello which is very simple and then i have another function called underscore by so i have again just put an underscore in front of the function name just like i put an underscore in front of the variable name so now let us try to see what happens if i do from my module import all okay so i am just importing everything from my python script called my module so now if i just try to do print x let us see what happens i get the value of x which is 10 right but now if i just try to do print underscore y and i try to run this script let us see what happens we get an error which is saying that the name underscore y is not defined so here comes the thing whenever you write any variable name with a leading underscore in your python script and you try to import import it somewhere else uh, in this way from my module import asterisk then all those variables which have been declared with a single leading underscore will be treated as private and they will not be imported so you can use this property actually for creating private variables for your specific python scripts so now underscore y is not defined and you cannot use it similarly if i just try to do let's say hello i just try to run the function hello i get hello right but if i just try to do underscore by let us see what happens will it get imported or not it will not get imported because it is starting with a leading underscore so it says that name underscore by is not defined because it was actually not imported so this is basically a python property a kind of a convention which says that if there is any function name any class name or a variable name starting with a single leading underscore and you try to import that script in some other python script then all those names will not be imported so now um, you must be thinking that if there is any way to um, override this behavior right so yes you can override this behavior by just replacing this asterisk with the name of the specific names of the classes methods or the variables that you want to import so if i just try to do print uh, from my module import underscore y and underscore and underscore by so let us see what happens so let me just try to use both of them here for you print underscore y so i have just written that from my module import underscore y and underscore by and print underscore y and underscore by so let us see what happens look at that everything works fine without any error so this um explains that if you just do not want that private variable behavior then for that you can just simply replace that asterisk thing with the specific names of the variables functions or the classes that you want to import so this is the case 3 which is quite interesting now let us go through the case 4 which is quite quick and easy to understand which is when can we use the single trailing underscore or when should we use the single trailing underscore so let me give an example let's say you wanted to create a list like 1 2 3 4 and now you want to give it some name so you just thought that this is a list so let me call it a list so you just do list equal to this right and then um in some other case after some lines you had a tuple like this one two three four five and you wanted to and you called it t and you wanted to convert it to a list you wanted to typecast it with a list so you wrote list t as you would do in a simple case but you get an error which says that the list object is not callable so now what is the error here because you know that this is the way of typecasting the list the error here is that you have already changed the meaning of the list keyword by giving it a variable name in this way by saying that list equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is wrong because by doing this, the list keyword name is no longer valid and now list just signifies this particular thing. So if you just try to type list, you will get 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is the um, 
error or kind of a thing that one should try to escape from so one very easy solution is that you can always um, first of all let me restart it because i do not want to use the list um, value so now um, a, v a better way of doing this thing is that you can just give the names like this list underscore so this is a much better way of giving the names to the if you want to use the keywords okay so list underscore is different from simply list keyword and now you can have that as well and you can have this as well so this is one of the ways of avoiding the conflict between your object names and the keywords okay so now we have stumbled upon the case 5 which might be useful for you in some cases when you are dealing with the classes in python so the case 5 says that you can use a double underscore and that will change the way you can call a method um, through an object of a class so basically you have a class method and if it contains a double underscore then the way you can call that method by using an object will change in a significant way so let us try to see what that means so here I have an example of a very simple class called A in which I have something called let's say just to show you a single method I'm calling because it has a single underscore in front of it and then there is a double underscore in front of it which I'm calling double method and it is simply printing A okay so now um, I will create a simple object of my class A and now I will try to call the single method of my class so let us see if that works or not that is working because it is saying finish in 0.1 seconds but now let me replace the single method with the double method and let us try to see what happens now look at that some error is raised what is the error it is saying that the a object has no attribute double method which is quite surprising because i have just written a class method here because and it names its name is double method so the problem here is that any class method which starts with a double underscore has to be called in a bit different way which is you have to just put underscore and the name of the class um, through which you want to call that method. So I'm just writing underscore a and then double underscore method and now if I just run it I will get a which is correct right. So whenever if your class has a method which contains double underscore then you have to put underscore and the name of the class and then the name of the function while you are trying to call it. Now you must be thinking that where I might use it because it seems quite useless right. So the use is in the case of inheritance so let me show you that particular case now. So now let me create class class b which is inheriting from class a and it also has the same method called double method okay and let me just do print b so it is class b and it has a double method so now if i say b equal to capital b and now um, consider the case that you want to be sure that you just want to implement the double method of your class b then in that case you will do this underscore b double underscore double method and now if you want to implement the double method of your class a then you will do this okay so now what i am doing in line number 13 is that i am specifically calling the double method which is implemented under the class b and in the for line number 14 i am specifically calling this particular class method which i am inheriting from the class a so now if i just try to run this i will get b and a which is correct right so in the case of inheritance if you want to specifically call a method which has been used with the same name in both the child class and the parent class then in those cases you can put a double underscore and then specify the name of the class through which you want to call that method okay so this is the use case of this case number five i hope you understood it so now let us move on to the next case So here is another way in which underscore is used in python which is the magic methods in the class functions. So basically there are some class functions which are um, you can say carry a special meaning for example double underscore init double underscore which gets triggered itself when you try to create a new object of your class right. So similarly there is double underscore len double underscore which is used for getting object length double underscore eq double underscore which is used for equating two objects like this. So these are all magic methods get triggered at some special cases and these are called magic methods that's why because they 
carry a special meaning for your class okay so now i have created a class a here which contains three methods called init basically double underscore init double underscore that is the right way of saying that so this is a magic method which gets called when you try to create a new object of your class double underscore len double underscore is a method which gets called when you try to call the len function over your class object and double underscore eq double underscore gets called when you try to equate two objects of the same class so let me show you with an example let's say I have this definition of a class and I create an object so now look at that it gets object initialized because this function got itself um, called automatically similarly if I just try to do length of a I will get this particular thing get object length was executed and return 10 you get the 10 right similarly if i just create b equal to capital b like this um, sorry b is equal to a like this and now if i just try to do a is equal to b or not look at that equate the two objects so this particular thing was executed so in this way you have some magic methods there are a lot more and there are many that you can try to explore so all of them use underscore as a special way of signifying that they are magic methods here comes the last case which I'm going to discuss in this video which is you can use underscore to separate the digits of a number okay so generally when we write any kind of numerical figure we simply use comma while we write it on some paper right so we can use this for saying that we have written 1 million so it helps you to calculate or just try to understand the number that you have written in a quick manner right so now if you want to if you want the same kind of thing in python then what you can do is you can just put an underscore here in place of comma so now if i just try to say x equal to this what i mean is that i am saying x equal to 1 million okay so underscore can be used for separating the digits of a of a given number numerical value and it is just for readability purpose nothing else right so this is the case 7 which is the last case and i hope you enjoyed um uh, enjoyed exploring what are the different ways in which underscore can be used in python and if you still have any doubts you can put them in the comment section below that's it from this video thanks for watching